You're listening to Inside Melbourne, the official podcast of the Melbourne Football Club. Proudly presented by Zurich Insurance, ensuring the things you truly love, like this podcast. Welcome to episode three of Inside Melbourne. My name is Ben Gibson here with Lily Mithen, who's just got media galore at the moment, roaming Lil on Friday night. How are you enjoying all this, Lil? Oh, look, you know me, just uh, take what I can get. You know, I'm not out in the park, so just get my mug, you know, plastered everywhere, and it's, it's working quite well. What do you think? I think that opportunity definitely came as a result of your Inside Melbourne work, would you say? Yeah, probably. All that modelling we spoke of earlier, you know, yeah. it's just really just boosting the confidence. All over the place. Now, can you introduce our two guests today? Yes, um, I'm excited to announce these two. We may not quite understand what they're saying half the time, but we do have <laughs> our two Irish friends, one Neve McAvoy and one Sinead Golderick. Welcome, girls. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for getting my name right, Lil. Yeah, well, what do you think? Should I just keep referring to you as Neam or? No, <laughs> and Sinead. <laughs> Neam and Sinead. Who, someone got yours really wrong, didn't they? Goldie? Uh, no, Paxi got Macker's Mackie boy. Oh yeah, Mackie boy, <laughs> Mackie boy. They, yeah. It was phonetically correct. I was happy enough. Everything else she said about me at Jersey lunch was nice. <laughs> so you two haven't been in Australia for too long. Have you enjoyed it so far? It's brilliant, um, and just being part of the club is great. Um, like the moment we came in, the girls are so um, nice, and the culture is really good, and management and players. So we're we're learning a lot and loving it. Who's your favourite player? Just quietly. Lillian. Lillian Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nathan. Oh, Mithin. Yeah, well done. <laughs> That's How right. How did you one go for learning one. all these names? Pardon? How did you go learning all these names? Heart. Oh, it was a nightmare because the girls all got introduced to us by like their given birth names, but nobody actually calls each other those <laughs> names. And like Smitty's ne- has another nickname that like sometimes the coaches, coaches call her Cat. And I'm like, I have no idea who that person is. <laughs> well, yeah, what did, did someone just recently ask, who's Ainsley being Ainsley Kemp? Me. <laughs> like, who's Kempy? And Hate was like, no, she's <laughs> Ainsley. Yeah. Yeah. It must be confusing. And now, how did the opportunity actually come about? How did you end up down in Melbourne playing a completely different game? Because you've got a Gaelic football background. Um, one of our, we play for Dublin at home and one of the senior men at home for Dublin um, had an opportunity when he was 18 to come over here. Um, he didn't last very long, I think he got a bit homesick. He was playing with Hawthorne and he came home, but he had a few like connections over here. And someone got in touch with him saying, is there any way um, like we could get kind of two Dublin girls or whatever, and who do you think will be the most applicable? And he just mentioned our names to, um, to Todd and Todd kind of got in touch with us and we had to think about it and stuff. We kind of probably gave Todd a bit of a hard time where we were just kind of having to think about it and stuff and just weighing up our options. But, you know, Todd and, and Mick and everyone were so good to us. And, um, the, and like it was then when we came over here, like everything they said to us would be the case was the case. Like the girls are so sound. Uh, so nice. The, the, <laughs> so nice. Language you speak. Um, the culture in the club's amazing, you know. So, uh, yeah, we're just really lucky. It just kind of all fell in front of us and we just kind of took the opportunity with two hands. So, I did have a chat to Todd, sorry. And he said to ask you about the story about the first time you met Mick. Can you talk us through that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was after we won the All-Ireland, um, so I think it was the second day, um, so we were a bit merry, um, but yeah, Mick came out, uh, watched the game, so we met him, um, yeah, uh, in good old, old Irish fashion in a pub, and just met him there and chatted to him, and it was really nice, and he was at our match the day before and stuff like that, so um, yeah, it was good fun. A couple of Guinnesses together, or? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mick loved the beer. His family came down and stuff like that too, so um, yeah, it was really really nice yeah it was funny he was like i was like oh we're just in the pub if you want to meet us it was the day after the all ireland you know (laughs) we'd been on the like we hadn't had a drink in about 10 months and he was like oh but i'd really like to meet your family and i was like they're all in the pub as well (laughs) (laughs) of course we are we're We're irish (laughs) this is what we do we sit in the pub and we drink we were such a stereotype for that week when mick was over i we had to like apologize when we got here we were like that's out of the norm for us (laughs) sure it it is bad timing mick (laughs) i'm just waiting for end of season festivities with you (laughs) too another thing you've learned you sort of went off realized you might need a car Tell us about sort of the red dragon. Is that something that <laughs> it's caused a few headaches, I believe? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, 
yeah so we just um we were kind of like cycling up and down to the club but you know after like pre-season session you'd be spent so we were like we should probably look into uh, lauren pierce was really good to us as well but and she she was happy enough to be giving us lifts but we just didn't want to be putting her out of her her way and stuff um so we just kind of um met one of the other irish girls and she was like oh my partner's going home he was here for the first month that and he's tr he's like trying to move on the car he bought like but it's just a banger and we were like oh we'll take it but within like three weeks of having it it was making like crazy squealing noises in the car park and stuff and like all the boys would be there and they'd be like do you Irish girls need help and we were just like no we're okay we just like ignored the squealing noise until the car broke down so yeah we're back on the bike but yeah. uh, <laughs> we also broke down on the way to Casey Field on the motorway so we call Jackie from too, idea. not a place you want to break down at now Goldie you spent a little bit of time here in the admin side of the Melbourne Footy Club on the phones how'd yeah. you go calling people bit of a language barrier did everyone understand you yeah it was it was <laughs> tough um so yeah I was working um with a bit of the commercial team so I was just calling people to try and get some sponsorship for the girls um first two phone calls weren't good. <laughs> um, one of them was like, I can't understand what you're saying. And I was like, oh, uh, and there's like six people in the office listening to you. So number one, I hate talking on the phone in front of people. And number two, when you ring someone for the first time and they say, I can't understand you, <laughs> I was like, OK. Uh, thankfully, uh, a few phone calls um, were better after that. So I spoke to actually Lampy's auntie. And then I think I spoke to, no, Lil, was it your grandmother? Yeah, my yeah. grandma, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And Paxi's um, number one fan. Um, so that was nice. Fantastic. Oh. Now, I'm cautious you're going to have to leave soon because there's plenty to do, but we're going to skip ahead to Lil's quiz. And so this is one of the best segments uh, we've got on this podcast. Lil answers, asks you a question and you have to buzz in with your name and first in <laughs> gets to answer the question. So Fun. if you'd like to just test your buzzer, just testing one, testing Need. two. Goldie. Great, perfect. First ones to actually hit the table whilst they've said their name. Yeah, I like, I like it. it. Good yeah, little, it's good. Good little yeah. addition. Okay, so this one, it's slightly different, but it's um, Australian slang. Okay. Oh, so you're going to no. have to, so I'm going to say the Aussie version. So the yeah. slang word, and you're going to have to try and make sense of what okay. the word actually means. Okay. Okay. <laughs> word number one, knackered. Oh, I missed the table. You, you have, have to say your name. name. You have to say your name. Neve. Oh, <laughs> Neve, yep. Tired. Yes, nice. Yeah. First one to you. Second one, have a crack. Goldie. Oh, I think you got it. Yeah, Neve. Um, just like have a go, give it a shot. <laughs> yeah, good one. Attempt something we've got here, so that's definitely passed. Word number three, brekkie. Goldie. Goldie, yep. Breakfast. Yep, perfect. <laughs> Very um, Aussie so far. <laughs> yeah, Aussie, you're fitting in perfectly. Um, frothy. Frothy. Go, yep. I'll get, this yeah. is a guess. Milky. Milky, no, <laughs> no, no like a frothy milk. No, no, oh, not bad, but not that. No. Uh, does it just defer to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah you get uh, the like now. soft, like a person who's soft. I don't know. No, I'm gonna go again. I'm put in some context. I'm gonna go have a frothy with some mates. Beer, gold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, nice. I'll give that to you. It's beer. <laughs> so having a frothy is having a beer. If you, know, right. you know, frothy, frothy beer. Close, yeah, that was close. Um, Arvo. Goldie. Yeah, Goldie. Afternoon. Correct. Bloody oath. Neve. Yep. Okay. Um, just like, yeah, that's true. That's a fact. Yeah, like. close enough. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Mackers. Neve. Goldie. Oh, fuck. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's you, Goldie. You say so, so your name a bit quicker. <laughs> Go on. Is this McDonald's? Yeah, McDonald's. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Not you, Neve. Okay. Okay. Good for you. Um, Barbie. Neve. Goldie. You. Ooh, uh, ne yeah, Neve, I think. Barbecue. Yep, yeah, well done. And this is the last one for the um, Aussie slang theme. Sticky beak. Neve. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Neve. <laughs> having a look, like going down, having a nose, like watching what so, was happening. So, can you, I feel like you tried to repeat this one. And what was the terminology that you thought it was when? Uh, yeah, so our partners were over for two weeks over Christmas and they came down to training to just have a watch and like see what's going on. And Lil said that to me. Uh, she was like, oh, they're having a sticky beak. And then I was explaining <laughs> it to the physio Jordan later. And I was like, yeah, Lily said something to me earlier about a sticky duck. And I didn't know what she was <laughs> talking about. But at home in Ireland, we do this thing where we like 
make things up that just rhyme with what the word actually should be so like sticky duck made sense to me because it's a look yeah <laughs> yeah right but yeah. you guys don't do that <laughs> no we don't yeah we'll take our first break on inside melbourne goldie might have to take off but we'll hit neve with some hard questions from the outer right. just after this Thanks to our co-principal partner and podcast sponsor, Zurich Insurance. For over 100 years, they've been insuring the people and things you truly love. And just like you, they truly love footy and they truly love the Ds. This is Inside Melbourne here with Lily Mithen and Neve McAvoy. Now, questions from the outer. The first one I want to throw at you, Neve, is what AFLW rule have you found the most difficult to comprehend? That's from Wendy. Um, so... <laughs> In training, well, obviously, as you know, myself and Goldie always drop the ball and give away 50s. Like <laughs> I've only done it in training, but I'd say I've done it so many times. I got to the point where it was like, okay, Neve, the next time you do that, you have to go do a lap. <laughs> 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 so, I know I've still done it a couple of times since, but I'm hoping not to do it in a match. But um, no, that one's actually straightforward enough. But at home, um, when there's like a foul or uh, and like the whistle's blown, like anyone can kick the free and you can't just play out decide like oh nobody stand on the mark so I, i'll play on like it has it's like a proper stoppage if that makes sense and it has to be kicked from the point where the free kick was won so like sometimes i hear like whistles blown and and to me what it looks like the girls are doing they're just ignoring it like <laughs> i'm playing on and i'm like what is going on and then i'm a bit frazzled and kind of lose my own what i'm supposed to be doing myself so i think that's that's a hard one because like sometimes girls get kind of they get tackled and brought down and I remember one time like Gabby nailed someone in training as, as Gabby can only do <laughs> and the ball popped up to Junior and Junior handballed it across the top to me and I was kind of like what do I do now no well I thought I was gonna have to give it back to Junior for her to take the free <laughs> if you know what I mean or yeah, like Gabby yeah. to take the free but Junior was just playing on because like I was in an advantageous position and she, <laughs> and she was kind of looking at me being like Go. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at me for? <laughs> so I think that's that's one that's quite different. Like sometimes like the umpire blows the whistle and just might as well not have because <laughs> play, it just plays on anyway. So I suppose that that was one that kind of caught me a few times. But yeah, obviously the the protected area one's quite a big one. It's quite an obvious one that like we've given away fifties um so far in the first two rounds where people have kind of and even in the um challenge games where people have like ran across the protected space but I suppose the hardest part of that is running across the back of it because in my opinion like you're not impeding the person who's kicking the ball there because they can't even see that you run across the back of it so I think that's one that I'd kind of um be really trying to like remind myself of when I'm playing stuff is like not to run the across the back of the protected space because I do think we've actually given away it was, it was yeah, neither of the many, Irish girls <laughs> yeah it was mad a year and bloody mad a year and but yeah. um I also did hear that I think it was maybe last week that you potentially asked the question so how come and mind you this was after round one and you asked so how come the umpire sometimes throws it up in the air and sometimes they throw it <laughs> over their head yeah, is so that true we were, <laughs> we were in training and we were practicing like stoppages and stuff and the coaches were just throwing it up like normally like it would be thrown up like a GA, ball up, yeah like just like a ball like that's how it's thrown up in ga and then we went out to geelong to play a practice game and the re- umpire was like walking ages away and like drowning <laughs> <laughs> <I was dead. laughs> i've obviously watched afl like loads of times before and stuff but that had never happened in training because we just <laughs> like our coaches Always were just up, yeah. off. so i was just like that is slightly confusing. I can see I can see how that would be the case. Take a little while to adjust. Now, yeah. kind of on the opposite path, Nikki wants to know what's the best skill that you've brought from Gaelic to the AFLW? Um, it's hard enough for, for me to tell because like sometimes I think I'm doing the right, right thing and I'm not um, doing the right thing. But I think, say, like Junior and some of the girls would be telling me that um, I'd be quite aggressive in the sense of like, playing on and bringing the ball forward um, kind of a bit more direct in that sense. Like sometimes it's obviously not the right thing, but sometimes it creates opportunities for other people where if you just, you know, break a line or don't stand back on the mark when there's nobody standing on them, don't come back on the mark if there's nobody there, like I'd naturally just bring the ball forward. So I think just kind of that direct running style um, is 
is applicable kind of transfers across where I like think sometimes sometimes I obviously <laughs> do it inappropriately sometimes a little bit rogue sometimes but <laughs> I, I remember I was marking Smitty in training one day and I caught the ball this is very early on and I caught the ball and like 10 yards out from goal and she was like my marker and she was like don't move she's like stop <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny yeah like sometimes I can hear the girls like instructing me as I catch the ball like what's the right thing to do but Junior's always the one like she every single time she's like just go like she loves it so <laughs> Yeah, no, it's cool, but everyone's been so helpful, so. And Peter was wanting to know, how much practice did you have with an oval ball before coming over here? Um, Not a huge amount. So um, Todd was over in Dublin in May, and um, we were at my club grounds, just did a couple of days with himself, and Brooke was obviously with him, and um, did a couple of days there, and he sent him videos back and forth to Mick of, like, (laughs) how he should coach me. And then he left us to two footies and we we did a bit over the summer but at that time we were in the height of our dublin championship so i didn't want to be doing like a huge amount because obviously my focus at that time was to win an all ireland and um, but after that finished then i got i only got about three weeks in prior to probably coming here um, but and those three weeks you're also celebrating an all line fan so you were yeah. <laughs> a bit dusty on the mornings you were practicing I'm sure now Melbourne's got a really strong connection with Ireland and that's through Jim Steins Cosmo wants to know what you know about him oh yeah I know everything like well sorry no obviously I don't know everything <laughs> but like he's a bit very, very famous at home like you know he had an outstanding career here um, his brother Brian had an absolutely outstanding career at home with Dublin. You know, he has an All Star, he has an All Ireland. Like, um, I don't know if people over here realise that that he's like his brother Brian is like a senior WGA legend, um, and obviously like Jim's a legend as well. And there was like there's great history there of you know Jim playing for both Australia and Ireland in different combined rules games. So, um there's great history there and we obviously knew that when we were in conversations with um mick and todd back in may you know it's we're very proud of where we come from and our team at home and our culture and everything at home and we really wanted to go somewhere that kind of aligned with the standard and values that we have at home in dublin um i suppose the first couple of weeks we were here we were probably a bit homesick like we packed badly it was raining and cold and stuff like that and but Brian, Brian Steins actually reached out to us and had us um, over for dinner and stuff. And it was really nice because um, he gave us an insight as someone who comes from like a GEA background. And we were saying, oh, yeah, we're grand, but we just can't get in the ball. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, well, this is why like you can't like, you know, he'd have an ins- he'd think like us in the sense of like as a GEA footballer. And he'd be like, these are the reasons why these things are happening. So um that was really great and he's been really good to us obviously he presented Goldie her, her jersey on um, her debut which was really special but um, yeah no we, we'd be well aware of Jim before we got here you know he's a legend at home as well so Ella was wanting to know what's better AFL or Gaelic <laughs> 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 real spot, stitch out yeah. here Ella um, they're actually much more different than people would have you believe like so before I came over here you know they were saying oh um like your attributes as a Gaelic footballer will be like really um really good for when you come over there but like lots of my good habits at home will probably be bad habits here in the sense of you know because obviously the tackle isn't the same so they are quite different and um, so I don't know if it's it's fair to prepare or to compare them like because the tackle and everything and the shape of the ball <laughs> makes them so um so different but you know obviously I've like at home um Gaelic football is nearly a part of my identity so that's probably a difficult question for me to answer because I'm only here 12 weeks but um having been here like the amount of respect I have for the game now is is huge like it's grown week on week and I'm just yeah really enjoying learning and hopefully I don't know I don't know how to answer that question but yeah <laughs> yeah I've like a huge amount of respect for both both sports and you're coming fresh off your debut so a pretty special night on friday got the jumper presentation from your father dave who kind of stole the show in the rooms pre-game <laughs> like, talk us through that um yeah i actually that's really like we don't we wouldn't usually do things like that at home you know um the dressing room's just the players and the management so it was really unusual for me um to have to notice my parents walking into the dressing room I was like oh god <laughs> what are they doing in here and uh, then um, Dave was obviously given the floor then to to speak um 
but yeah he's a big personality and he's one of my my great friends you know um he's been so supportive of me my my whole life my whole career um, but as I said, yeah, big personality. So I wasn't sure what he was going to say, but uh, <laughs> he did quite well. And, um, you know, there's been a big reaction from that at home because it's something that's quite unusual in the sense of we don't have we don't have that jersey presentation at home because you don't have a set number, if, if, as it were. Like you just you get your number based on the position you're playing that day. So, um, no, it was, it was really nice. And it was really special, special memory that we have now. And um, I've got a lot of like lovely feedback from it and stuff. But, yeah, it was really nice for me on the night. <laughs> And if we skip to post game, you were in the middle of the song. Now it started off with you trying to get on the outer, not wanting to take too much attention, and then by about the second verse, you, <laughs> you I don't know if it was Irish dancing or just random dancing, no, but you pulled out some moves. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? Yeah, so funny because I was talking to Newy afterwards, and she was like, "You're so confident, like, uh, like that's so funny what you did in the online." I was like, "That wasn't confidence. Like, I didn't want to be in the middle of the circle on my own. The girls the previous week had a way better because it was three of them, and they could just, you know." hug it up but um, I was just standing in there on my own and I just got so awkward I was like I can't just stand here and like look at everyone like yeah cool so I was like I might as well just dance around and it'll be less awkward <laughs> but it, it is worth but mentioning then, that lots of people were actually trying to pull you out of the circle and just but I didn't join the main that. group so here she is just ignoring no I'll just stay in here no and but I didn't realise that at all because the previous week the three girls had stayed in the middle on their own for the whole song so I didn't know that people were trying to put I was like this is I, I thought I'd just be standing in the middle for a full song, just like, oh, cool. But no, it was it was fine. Uh, yeah, it was embarrassing and then. another one on that, because did you plan something with Harriet? Because you usually get the Gatorade shower. You didn't get too much Gatorade or Powerade or whatever we're calling it these days on you. The very final bit, you, they went to throw it on you. You dodged out of the way and I copped all of it. <laughs> I know. I and here I was just as a drowned rat. I didn't know any of these like rituals. Like, I didn't know my dad was going to come in to present my jersey. Didn't know I'd have to stand in a circle at the end. <laughs> and like, just I just made it worse for myself by dancing around because I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> but yeah, no, I was delighted I didn't get too soaked with the Gatorade. <laughs> will, you, will you take any of these rituals back? home to Ireland to the Gaelic yeah um we do in fairness um when we have something kind of similar um just when somebody's like new onto the panel at training though we just like make them stand in the middle and sing a song um, <laughs> it's kind of like an initiation type thing so we have some similar stuff at home but uh, I don't know if the jersey one will ever transfer across because obviously as I said the jerseys aren't allocated but there's definitely lots of things that um you know we will take home from this experience that would be of benefit to our team at home like yeah it was certainly an eventful debut for you how did you actually enjoy playing it was pouring with rain it was tough conditions did you enjoy the contest uh yeah absolutely you know um it's my first real experience of like competitive footy um i would hope that in the coming weeks i'd be able to give myself more of an opportunity to impact the play like there was times at times i was just a bit um flustered like with the interchange and stuff is so different to at home um, so we wouldn't kind of roll on and off like that so that was um, something that was beneficial like last week to get my head around just kind of moving forward and I won't be as phased by that um, but yeah no absolutely really enjoyed the whole experience um, hoping for maybe better weather and better, better weather <laughs> next week but uh, yeah it was great and um, yeah hoping to just build on my own personal performance I know it was a great team performance but yeah yeah, 20-point win, impressive stuff against the Dogs. Unfortunately, Ainsley Kemp went down with her ACL for the third time. I know Kemp is a big listener of the podcast, only person that I actually know that has listened to the first two. So well done, hopefully <laughs> she's listening. listening again and uh, hopefully she gets better soon. Now this week, Friday night again against the Saints at RSEA Park. You must like the Friday night stage, big crowd, plenty of noise, exciting time to play. Um, yeah, I, I really like, I know obviously some of the girls who are like, you know, have careers and jobs over here, the Friday night <laughs> games can be a bit of an issue, but um, I really like the Friday night, night games. I think, you know, there's a good buzz around them. I like playing evening games. I think it kind of lends to it being a great event, um, but also it's nice to have then the Saturday <laughs> and the Sunday off to just kind of rest and recover and, um, you know, meet up with family and stuff, so. For you who doesn't necessarily know all the opposition teams and players, what sort of research will you do before a game or talk to the coaches to get up to speed? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the coaches are obviously great. Um, I do a lot of individual education um, so that I'm hopefully not making those basic uh, fundamental rule errors and stuff like that. Um, but 
yeah, I'd the the coaches are so insightful. You know, we have pre game team analysis that I think is beneficial enough. Um, there's no really need for me to go above and beyond what's being supplied to me. I'm obviously watching the games as well. Like I I watch the opposition matches. Obviously, the app is there and is available. So I'd I'd other than just watch the matches and listen to the information I'm being given by the coaches. There's not really a need for me to do a huge amount of research because I don't really know if I'd be the best person to be making summations myself <laughs> on things <laughs> when I don't necessarily know the rules. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a good thing. Yeah, yeah. She gave it away. And how's Lauren Pierce tracking Lil? She looks like she's going to come back in the next couple of weeks, slot into the ruck. Yeah, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. I think um, I don't think she'll be right this weekend. She's still having a few little issues with the knee, but she's training the house down and doing everything possible. It's just um, a matter of you know the the medicos clearing her and, and getting her back out there. But in saying that, I think Harriet's doing a such a good job in there, and she's just sort of throwing herself at a new opportunity in, in a new role and really thriving in it. So um, yeah, we'd love to have Lozzy P back, but. Hopefully it's uh, sooner rather than later. And your ankle, out of the moon boot, moving pretty well? Yeah, yeah, I'm actually loving myself sick. My ankle is playing so nicely. Um, so, yeah, been back running, um, having a cheeky little kick of the footy, which I won't tell the physio just yet. So she she doesn't listen to this, so it doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's going really well. So, um, yeah, eyes are still set for next weekend return, which will be, which will be great. And I know the weekend – the weather this weekend might not be so great so it's play at marvel under the roof you know pristine conditions it's the only <laughs> way i roll myself out very good now maca you got to get back across the road for a skill session thanks very much for joining us did you, did you enjoy your first podcast yeah yeah thanks so much um, i know sometimes i can be difficult to understand i know i speak <laughs> quickly but um hopefully um anyone who listens in can can pick up some of what i'm saying just a little bit maybe yeah. not all but some of it i love that i got your name around right <laughs> a great start. <laughs> great start. Well done. Very good. This has been Inside Melbourne, proudly brought to you by Zurich.